Hey everybody! Thanks for tuning in. Uh, just give me one moment to get centered here. This is the fun part today. We're doing the gray wax over lazy linen. Got some tips to share. Hey everybody! Just gonna make sure that I can uh, sign in and see the comments and give some people time to tune into the live. Hope you're having a good day so far. Make sure these are ready. give it some time. Okay. All right, we've got a visitor. I'll start in a second here. If you guys have missed uh, part one of this project, I painted it in lazy linen and shared some priming and prepping tips. Be sure to check that out. Um, this is part two where I'm going to be adding some wax for effect. There's a lot of beautiful detail on here that I want to capture and accentuate and I'm going to show you how to do that today. Uh, so if you're tuning in now, um, just sign in, let me know where you're coming from. If you're working on a similar project, I'd love to know. And we'll get started in just a second here. Gonna wait for just a few more people to come on. Got the code ready for the day. It's not on a post-it. <laughs> okay, so we'll get started. Um, just wanna show you guys, uh, just run over the recap of yesterday's video. I primed this with our clear bonding primer from Country Chic Paint. It uh, goes on clear. This was a melamine laminate surface. It's a very inexpensive wood coverings that you see on typical vintage pieces. If it was, if you bought something thrifted and it's very light, chances are it might not be solid wood. It could have some faux wood coatings. This had uh, a fancy top and this is actually plastic, this bit right here on the front. Um, the, the frame itself is solid wood, so some of it is, but some of it needed some extra prep. Um, paint will adhere better over a wood surface than a faux wood, plastic, kind of non-porous surface. So I did a couple of coats of primer, let that sit overnight before I started the part one of this video. Then um, yesterday I did a coat of lazy linen, which is this beautiful light gray, as you can see, already dried. Um, I really love it. It's very fresh, it's very stark though, and I kind of covered up all the pretty detail, so I want to show that off again. All right, and just to let you know, we do offer a wax brush for our waxes. It's a very handy, stiffer bristle brush. Um, our waxes come in little tins, two ounce, four ounce, and I think an eight ounce. They're firmer than most if you have used other brands. Ours um, isn't really a cream, it is a firm natural beeswax and carnauba. Um, you just peel back the little film that develops. It does dry just on the top. Peel that back, you have all the useful wax. Um, this is my natural wax, I use it a lot, so it's almost gone. Um, but then I also wanted to show you the black wax and the gray wax. I'll be starting off with this because I really want to capture all these nice details. I'll be using the natural wax to seal kind of all over for the nice soft finish. And then maybe, depending on how it looks, add a little black just in the corners and crevices to make some stuff pop. And just to go over um, what you can use for lint-free cloths, um, because you'll want to buff the wax off when it's done. I like to use just typical J cloths. I got these from the dollar store, um, two bucks, right on the box. Um, or for like Frank's cloths. These are reusable dishwasher cloths. Um, very easy, lint free. If you can pull it apart and you don't see any lint coming off, that's perfect. Old t-shirts work as well, but if you go for something like a paper towel, all of those fibers are gonna work their way into your finish. You can brush them off once the wax is cured. It's a little tricky though, and it makes a bit of a mess. So try and grab something like this. Alright, anybody uh, commenting, let me know where you're from. I'm coming at you from Saltaire, BC, Vancouver Island. It's not very sunny today at all, very cloudy, typical BC. I'm um, going to start with, I've kept a few brushes um, just off to the side that I save for wax brushes. So this is the wax brush we offer. This is an artist brush that um, I just save for waxes for the fine details. And then this is just a, a random brush that I, I keep around for that. Um, dropped my brush. So this is the gray wax. Um, it's a very cool medium gray. That is a very, very light gray paint that I'll be working with. This is a stiff brush as well. So I'm just gonna press it right into the bristles. Just need a little bit on the ends. Um, uh, what you can do with wax is it helps to use natural wax alongside a tinted one. It acts like an eraser as these can be very pigmented and might uh, create that burnt furniture look if you're not careful. So start very small, um, little 
is, goes a long yeah. way. So I'm going to be applying it directly onto the paint because I want a very stark contrast. Gray wax or tinted waxes like antiquing or black will really absorb right into the paint. If you are worried and want to start slow, maybe apply natural wax first. You might find that helps for you. But I'm going to use natural wax after this to work away anything that I don't want. And I always like to start with my corners because that's just the, the natural effect there. So if you're seeing that little contrast, it is tacky to the touch, so it does come off. Once you've buffed it and it's had some time to dry, it won't come off anymore, so don't worry about that being a, um, an issue. A tip about tinted wax is we don't recommend putting it on a seating area. So if you're doing your chairs, your kitchen table set, um, you can wax pretty much everything. Uh, but if you're putting it on the seats, maybe use a glaze instead, a tinted glaze, then you don't get any color transfer onto your clothes. And uh, maybe seal the tabletop with something more durable, like a uh, tucko. So I still want a little bit, kind of all the way around. Lisa from Indianapolis, hello, thank you. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm gonna go in from this side. Gonna step over, sorry. Um, when I go to buff the wax, I don't really have to wait a long time. I might just let it sit for two seconds, maybe a minute or so. Um, you can let it sit longer if you'd like, then buff away. Not necessary. With our hemp oil though, that one is a drying oil, so you should let that sit for uh, um, maybe six hours to overnight if you can, and then buff the excess. But these products are pretty forgiving and very natural. So now I'm going to just brush right into the details. This is uh, kind of what I've been waiting for, and this is kind of the fun part. I just kind of want that right into the crevices. I'm not going to buff 100%. Um, on this detailed area because I want it all to kind of stay behind, but I do want to darken it up. Anywhere where um, grime would have naturally collected over time, we're just going to make this thing look nice and old. Nobody will ever have known it was just some laminate wood nightstand. trying to leave some gaps because when you, you buff you might just get all one uniform gray look so just go in a little be choosy where you place it in the crevices is best if you wanted to do something um, similar but you want to use um, maybe paint you could just do the dry brushing technique where you use um, just a little bit of paint on the end of the brush and just lightly stipple it kind of like this and it just adds a bit of character. Now that won't get into the cre um, crevices, but it does kind of make those details pop, but I'm gonna be doing it just a little differently this time. Very pigmented on the outsides. And I need to have that other side match. What's everybody think so far? Did I make a mess? <laughs> it's a really nice gray. It's kind of like, um, I would compare it to maybe cobblestone or pebble beach on our line. Um, those are paint colors, um, medium grays. So if you are painting with a medium gray and you want to use gray wax, it might not make that much of a difference. You might want to use a black wax or a white wax to darken or highlight, but this one works perfectly for lazy linen. And if you want to see what some of the other waxes do, you can always check out the sample finishes page on countrysheetpaint.com or just Google uh, that sample finishes. You can see um, a couple of tinted examples over popular colors. So if you want to work with a uh, vintage cupcake or like a pink or a light, for example, we have um, some already made examples that might help. And hopefully this one does today. Let me know in the comments if you guys are liking it so far. 
if you would use gray wax. I'd love to know if wax is a popular go-to for people or if they prefer glaze, or maybe you like the fresh crisp look and you didn't want to use wax. Let me know. I'm always curious what people prefer. Okay, I think that's pretty much even. It doesn't have to be too exact, I'm not worried. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna just kind of accent that. When I go in with natural wax after buffing the gray, it softens it up and makes it a little more natural. Um, you can always add more gray wax after you've done that. You don't have to use natural wax at all. Um, it helps to have them kind of side by side though for this more subtle application. Just depends on the look you're going for. And I want just a little bit kind of carrying through the sides. I do want that to pop a bit. Okay, let's see, kind of just, I like to buff off and see what that looks so I can kind of match off the rest of the piece. So I'm just gonna start with my J cloth. It's not wet or anything. It is lint free, so it's perfect. And it helps to either buff in circular motions or straight across, just depending. If I buffed in circular motions right now, I would kind of make just a big mess on the corner. So I do want to be particular where it goes. Um, I think I might buff um, a little more loosely with natural wax when I'm done, just for an all over finish. But I kind of want to lightly tint what's happening right now. This will soften it up. Whatever you don't buff away gets stuck in the crevices, stays behind. Kind of adds this like stone look. It's very nice. And I'll show you um, how to do just a very simple front. If you're working with a very plain piece, maybe you don't have this ready to go, nice beveled edges and detailing. Um, there's a very simple way to add a nice vintage look to it without having to get too complicated. So I'll show that in a moment. Um, I really want the gray wax to sit in the crevices here. So I'm gonna make sure that stays behind more. That one should be fine. So as you can see, it's coming off a little bit, but a little goes a long way. I'm not applying too much. I've, I've barely dipped into the pan. Um, I used this on a different piece. It was actually another nightstand and I, I barely put a dent in it. So a little goes a long way. This is the four ounce. Um, I don't really work with the two ounces because I just like to have one of each. If you're able to do that, definitely go for it. They are handy. Um, combining waxes, like I said, going in with the black wax on the edges will be handy later on. So it's fun to combine if you can. Adds more depth. Definitely nice to use. And I'll, I'll bring the camera in closer in a moment so you can see all of this texture. Um, wax is gonna settle over your brush marks, so if you did add a little um, texture while you were painting, it's gonna show that and it's gonna give it that old world kind of look, which is what I'm definitely going for on this piece. So there, got it nice, sitting in the crevices. If you find that you're having a tough time getting in there, you can always use the end of a brush and just poke in that way. If anyone's having trouble getting into crevices like this, always just use the edge of something, um, a, a gift card, that works too, or just using another brush like this and just softening it up, making sure it gets in there. That works as well, which is what I'm going to do because this brush just doesn't quite fit into all the spots. And then I'll finish up with the, the cloth. So there's a couple things you need on hand. Um, I use pretty much anything I have available. Oh, I didn't quite get into that spot like I did the others. And then just brush off some of that top. If you find any of the paint is coming up, um, mine isn't, but just if you find that some of the details are um, exposing some of the wood again, 
that might have been an indicator that more paint was needed or that you needed to let the paint dry just a little longer. Um, I did a touch-up coat this morning, so this would be three coats in total, um, just a very light touch-up. Uh, it did have enough dry, ni nice time to dry about four hours before I started waxing here. Um, make sure you give your paint lots of time to dry before you um, heavily work it with a cloth again. Uh, same goes for using glaze or a top coat. You really want to give everything, your last layers, kind of a really good chance to dry before adding an effect. If you can, if you're working with furniture. If you're doing craft projects, you can probably speed up the time with a hair dryer. Um, just depends on what you have time to do and the look you're going for. But I have lots of time to do this, so just going to take it slow and be careful about my application. So just softening up those lines a bit. I think I will go in with black wax later. It's always handy to use too. It's a little softer. The natural wax will balance everything out, don't worry. <laughs> if you're working with black wax, um, that's a little darker. If I was doing just black wax, I might have put down natural first just to um, give it a bit of a buffer so it's not so pigmented. But I'm liking how this is going on. Might have to come back to spots that I missed, but that's uh, just putting it on and fluffing off some of the excess. I'm going to pop this one out and I just want to show you how to do the frame and some of those other pieces. I'm going to go back in with the regular brush here and my grey wax. This is just a three quarter one if anyone's interested. I find it's handy for the smaller details of a nightstand. Same rule, just kind of sticking with the outside first. Really pushing it into the the edges here. Just gonna make sure you can see that actually. Sorry. There you go. Apologies for the mess on the table. So I wouldn't uh, probably put anything in this area. I'm just going to kind of circle around it, dance around the issue, and blend it into the center for a nice um, faded gradient. Works pretty much every time for me. Just going to start on one side just to show you. Got the same cloth, going to make sure that I have a clean side handy. And start buffing. I'm going to 
lighten up on the edge because I really want that to stay behind. The more you, you buff, the more it comes off. And it does leave a nice soft finish at the same time, just like the natural wax. Definitely want more to stay behind on the outsides. And just going to add some to the center here. Not to the center, sorry. Just said I wouldn't do that. Um, just to the edges. Kind of just a little, little curves on the outside. Because I'll bring it in and then buff it back. And it will really only stain that area and leave the center. And then only very lightly will I buff all over. Same amount. All right, ready to buff. Clean spot is getting harder to find on this cloth. There we go. In this one, I kind of want to use circular motions. If I was to use just straight across, I would end up with streaks and patches. I do want to have that rounded out look. Especially going to look great on square little fronts like this. Do you see the, the natural thing happening? Natural wax, I'm going to apply on the center and all over, and that will soften it up too. And if you accidentally get some in the middle like I just did, don't worry. Um, come at that right away and try and pick it up. Um, but if you just use natural wax over top, you could pretty much erase it too. So I'll probably save that, minimized it at least. Cleaner part of the cloth, start in the center, and buff out. And that's just the start. I'll show you what natural wax does when you apply it, and I'm just going to dip right in. If you don't have brushes, you can always just use the cloths. That works as well. Just going to apply some natural wax to the front here. Natural wax will also kind of deepen the color. It is adding a nice kind of shiny coating that trick of the light adds a bit of depth to a paint color instead of the flat matte look. And there it goes, kind of taking away some of that gray wax on the outside. I had kind of an uneven gob right there. And now it's uh, softened up. So very, very subtle effect. This is gray wax first, then natural wax. Works very nicely for me. And missed a spot on the bottom there. You can always go back in with gray wax. Um, might not be as pigmented because it's not directly on the paint, but definitely does the job work. All right, perfect. And maybe just a little bit of natural wax on the top here to soften up the center. And my layers of paint are good because none of that pesky wood tone is showing through. And that's just kind of the front of one drawer. Okay. And just going to move on to the second one. Same thing applies. Just a little bit of gray wax. Right on the outsides. If you're nervous about um, using gray wax the first time or any kind of tinted wax, Start with the leg of a piece or the back of the side. Um, I already tested out just on the side of this guy what it would kind of look like because you never quite know um, if you haven't tried it before. I haven't used gray wax over lazy linen yet and I'm glad I did. Um, yeah, start with the back of the piece if you're not too sure. And you can always remove wax. If you find you don't like the look at the very end or halfway through, you just, you've decided you want to go some other direction, you can remove this kind of wax with TSP cleaner, denatured, um, or rubbing alcohol. Um, another odorless mineral spirit always does the trick too. That will remove the, the, the wax buildup. Uh, keep in mind that it is kind of embedded well into the surface, so you might want to try that once or twice. Um, but really thoroughly remove those solvents with some water. Then go ahead and touch up your paint um, if you need to. And then you can use a different product 
If you're using, if you want to switch to hemp oil, you could probably just apply it right over if you'd like. Just depends on um, what the issue was. But just don't try and paint over wax. Um, it is an oil-based product and our paint is water-based. The two just don't mix. So I'm gonna get some natural wax in now because those are very harsh lines. Some people who are starting out who, who might not have known about the natural wax trick might be shocked to see that when they were wanting that. Um, if you put natural wax down first or after, that's how you get that. On its own, gray wax might not blend all the way into that soft finish. So the trick is with just a bit of natural wax. And you don't have to use a cloth, you can use a brush, but I'm just dabbing it into the center and working it outwards. I'm not sure if you can see from the sheen of the paint, maybe not. It's just gonna deepen it up and allow for that gray wax to move a little easily on the surface. See, that's just a bit of buffing. That's no buffing, softens it right up. Very nice natural look. So you do have quite a bit of control with wax. Um, with our glazes, once it's on, you either have to paint over it or sand it off. You don't have to sand, I always just paint over if I don't like it. Um, that's a water-based product. And that also offers kind of a similar effect. You just brush on and wipe away the excess. Oops, wrong wax, need a bit more natural. So what do we think of that? That's kind of just a little example. Oops, I really didn't get the bottom there. Want that staying behind. And I'm just gonna do maybe this trim right here to show you what the lengthwise look does. Really get it into the crevices. I think just about that would do. Pardon as I pass over the screen. Really want it in there. You really want to make sure it's in the crevices and the seams because when you go to buff, if that is still very light, it's not going to have that authentic look um, overall. It's the little things that, that you see once you're done that you wanted to do differently. So definitely make sure that's in the crevices. And you've got it all where you want it. And I'm gonna use my cloth to buff. Let me know what you guys think so far of this. I'm definitely loving it. It is gonna be darker now that I've used my gray wax. It's not that bright white look, but still love it. If you used um, Simplicity, our brightest white might have more of a starker contrast instead of using gray, but I'm happy with the results. All right. And just kept the cut on the side there. A lot of it gets cleaned up once you've applied your natural wax. And I've got a clean spot. I'm gonna go in with natural again. also really good for this piece right here. If you're finding that your drawer is um, tough or hard to get back into now that you've painted, um, sometimes the sides are a little hard, just a bit of natural wax um, actually or even a, a candlestick, rub that right on there, takes care of it. Uh, the beeswax bar if you have it works as well. Wax is a very common trick to help more slide easier in furniture. I learned that like two years ago, that's way too late. <laughs> So I have it remaining on the edges there. I 
I'm going to tackle this side now that I can see it a little better. Because I want to show you how this whole piece looks. I'm not doing it justice right there. I'll have a finished result um, on our Facebook page and maybe on our Instagram sometime soon. I do have some cute um, hardware that came with it. Uh, little keyholes, like uh, princess heart kind of style. And I'm going to use some cream to brighten them up. They're just an ugly brass right now. So I'll have this all decked up and staged. Be sure to check out our Instagram or our Facebook um, in the coming day or two. Love to hear what you guys think about the end result. In the bottom, but I don't know if we have enough time today. Really want that in the crevices. There we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and add those little triangles on the outside here. Don't even have to be very exact about it because you are buffing, so you don't have to be perfect. A dirty cloth here. Um, clean spot, natural wax. Just using a little bit, just a pinch on each front. sure it's clean on this center area here. Now I did them three separately um, so they're not 100% uniform. I suggest doing all three steps at the same time and then buffing at once. I'm just showing you in sections how you would kind of tackle surfaces like this, designs and areas like that. If you find it's too pigmented just add some more natural wax to um, lift some of that off. If you find you've made a mistake like I did right there, just a bit of natural wax. Softens that up and makes it go away. <laughs> and it smooths it out. And I'll use a little bit here just to smooth that out. And here. It's like magic. It's such a nice subtle effect. I do have to say wax offers the best kind of finish for that. So I just love that kind of natural effect. Makes me happy every time to see it. Oops, didn't went straight, there we go. But as you can see, very dramatic contrast between the two that we're working with. Um, I'll show you real quick on the side. I think we have some time. All the way up. Pressing that into the bristles. Make sure you get all the edges. Wouldn't make sense for some of it to be clean. Um, I do suggest popping out the dress, um, the drawers for something like this sometimes. That helps, but not necessary. Oop, got a mess right there. Not ready to work with the top yet. And for the actual top of the nightstand, I would say do the same kind of thing. Frame in your edges and then use natural wax to buff it away. Um, it's a very broad surface, so I would have bigger triangles and then buff for a um, darker look, less wax on the corners for a lighter look. 
And same kind of rule over there, as you can see. Um, not much in the middle, got lots on either end. Gonna buff it. If I was going to just put natural wax on right now, you could, it would be a very slight difference, but I'd be working with a lot of wax and I would really um, don't need to do that. So I like to just do step by step, see how it looks, add wax where I need to. And really make sure it's in the crevices. There wouldn't be gaps at the very top. That wouldn't happen over time. <laughs> Dirt is not selective. Okay. And really buff in the center. Um, there we go. If you wanted to add a bit more depth and definition, you could um, try the black wax and just apply that in some of those crevice areas. I would probably start with the four corners, then work your way in. So that's a tip, um, use the gray wax first, then follow up with black wax for more of a pop. I don't want um, a cooler, stark contrast, I think, with this one. I just wanna go with a nice, faded, muted, blended look. But we'll see when it's all done. Helps to just add once you're finished the main part. Okay. A little natural wax, clean that back up in the center. Gonna need a bit more than that. And what that's gonna do is gonna make these pillar bits um, of the frame. This is gonna be very, very light, and then this is gonna be very, very dark. I won't be able to get too much into the crevices, so it's a very nice natural look. That's just some of the basics um, of using country sheet paint wax. And I think this was a pretty good example with the light to dark. You can still see some of the original lazy linen. I'll just pop that, uh, oops, pop that second door back in and back it up so you can see the full effect. You guys enjoyed the demonstration so far. Hope it gave you some ideas for your own piece. If you have anything you want to work on similar, you can always ask us questions on how to achieve it. Check out some of our past tutorials. The sample finishes page, really if you don't know where to start or what some stuff would look like over others, always check that page out. It's got so much information. Our website, um, past videos, make sure you subscribe. Um, if you want to see part one of this, just filmed it yesterday. It's in our live stream section. I think I'm going to go in with another brush and use natural wax to soften this part up because it's a, a little more rustic than that. But this is kind of the uh, general gist of using gray wax and lazy linen. Um, very simple. Uh, as you can see, I didn't really go in with this yet. I think I would uh, for the broader top and the side. So the wax brush, very handy for the, the bigger surfaces. But if you have artist brushes that you're not using paint for, definitely use those for the finer details. I realize I hadn't shared the code yet, but I just want to real quick because I worked so hard on painting it. Laminate 10, that's 10% off countrysheetpaint.com or .ca. We're a Canadian company, but we ship everywhere. So be sure to check us out. Um, very healthy, uh, eco-conscious paints. Um, I love using them. As you can see, I love using the wax. It's now all over my hands, so I gotta wash that off. But I hope you guys enjoyed the tips. Um, make sure you subscribe to get more. I'm going to be on, I think, next Wednesday doing a rainbow stencil over a stool. Um, it's a similar project to the one we did with a another uh, nightstand or something, um, but it was a time lapse, so too quick. I'm going to go uh, break it down with texture powder and a bunch of fun paints and embossing, so be sure to check that out. Um, happy painting, and you guys have a great rest of your day.